Good morning once again, and good morning to all those listening out on our internet broadcast this morning. And uh, today we're going to start a new series. Uh, We're going to get up close and personal with God. We're going to learn what it is to really know God the way He would like us to know Him. And the title of today's message is, The Flesh of Jesus. The Flesh of Jesus. I'm going to start off with a story of a few people with uh, problems like we might have faced sometime in our life or perhaps are facing now. Uh, Let's start off with Sonia. She didn't know where to turn. Here she was, a teenager, pregnant, out of wedlock with some very tough decisions to make and some very rough days ahead. If only only God would tell her what to do. Then there's John. He feels that he's been called to the ministry. His friends have been encouraging as well, as well as his wife, but can he really make such a drastic career change in, in midlife? He wishes and prays that God would give him a clear understanding. And what about Hank? <clears throat> he was widowed over a year and a half ago. His, his wife really meant everything to him. The world doesn't, doesn't seem the same to him anymore. As it, it's as if reality has somehow closed in on him. <clears throat> he gets every, <clears throat> up every morning uh, thinking of breakfast and, and conversation, right? But there's no one there to talk to. Everything in the house is a reminder of the 54-some years of <clears throat> companionship and love. Sometimes he wonders, does God really care about him anymore? And maybe there's you out there who's listening. Perhaps you too are waiting for a word from God. There are decisions to make in your life, right? There's bills to pay and and dirty laundry waiting to be washed. Well, in the midst of your everyday life, whether it's because of a struggle or an inner conflict or even in the midst of joy, you desire a word from God. Do we dare ask, does, does God really have a word for us? Well, in our new series that we're starting today, Up Close and Personal, we're going to get some real-life insight, amen, from none other than Jesus Christ himself. We're going to get right up in his face, you might say. We're going to get personal with him. But that's all right, because he wants us, amen, to get personal with him. He wants us to know him up front and close. So today we're going to get up close on the flesh of Jesus, or really we're speaking about Jesus and his humanity. And John, the the gospel writer, says Jesus Christ is really the Word of God made flesh. Theologians call the doctrine of God's Word to us as the Incarnation. It's the greatest historical event when God became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. And this doctrine of the Incarnation is central to our faith, and it's, it's a word that we, we sorely need to hear once again just now. Amen? So let's start off with John chapter 1, verse 1. And it says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. Verse 5. It says, The light shines in darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish that light. That's right. It said, God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light, the Bible says. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. Verse 9, the one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world, speaking about Jesus. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He created this world, but the world didn't recognize him. Verse 11, he came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave what? The right to become children of God. Verse 13. They are reborn, 
not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or, pa or plan, but a birth that comes from God himself. Verse 14, so the word then became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And it says, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Now from this passage we've been reading, we learn a lot about the flesh of Jesus Christ. And from this text this morning, we can list at least three messages, right, from Jesus himself. Number one, Jesus says, I love you. Jesus says, I love you. You know, a little boy was working hard on drawing his, and his dad asked him, what are you draw, drawing there, son? The boy said, well, I'm, I'm drawing a picture of God. And his dad said, well, you know what? You, you really can't do that. Nobody knows what God looks like. But the little boy looked at his picture with satisfaction and said, they will in a few minutes. In other words, he was drawing a picture of God. And when people saw that, they'd know what God looked like. Now, of course, the father was right. We can't know what God looks like in a physical sense, but we do get a description of him through what? Through his message of love to each and every one of us. Now, as we consider this morning the incarnation, the act of God coming to us in human flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, we learn that God is really a picture of love because God is love. And his message is one that lets us know that he's deeply in love with us, each and every one of us personally. Now in the book of Mark, a rich young man came to Jesus. And he was seeking the key to eternal life. And the man told Jesus that he had obeyed. Listen, he says, I have obeyed all the commandments since I was young. So let's see what Jesus has to say to this young man in Mark chapter 10, verse 21. And it says, looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. He said, there is still one thing that you haven't done. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and then come and follow me. Now we read in the Gospels of the compassion and love of Jesus that he had on those who were possessed by demons, right, and, and those who were in need of physical healing. And even when it came time to, for the cross, Jesus' love for us did not waver. Let's look at John chapter 13, verse 1. It says, Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that the hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. It says, he had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. John 15 and 9. He says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. And he says, remain in my love. Now this isn't something that's going to go away. It's not here today and, and gone tomorrow, right? The love that Christ has for us is real, it's solid, and it's eternal. It doesn't go away. Romans 8, verse 38 says, I am convinced that nothing, the Bible says, nothing can ever separate us from what? From God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, Right? Neither our fears for today or our worries for tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Verse 39 keeps on going. It says, even no power in the sky, above or in the earth or below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed where? In Christ Jesus our Lord. So God's word in the flesh calls down to us through the ages, right? And the phrase that it is repeated time and time again, though his actions as well as his words, his comforting expression is through Jesus saying, I love you. And if you've never had the experience of knowing love, right? You can know it now through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because once you become a Christian or a Christ follower, right, you begin to understand what it means to truly know and embrace God Almighty. 
And Jesus' clear message to each and every one today is simply, I love you. God wants us to know that. The next thing God wants us to know about his flesh is, I want the best for you. Because I love you, I want you to have the best. Now look at what we're promised here. We're promised life that's more than physical or material. In John chapter 1, verse 4, it says, The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. Christ's life brought light to everyone. You see, Jesus wants the best for us, and the best is a life of intimacy with Jesus Himself. And if we try to save ourselves, that is, if we choose to live selfishly, and a kind of death takes over our lives. But if we get rid of ourselves and start stop trying to save ourselves, right, by following Christ, life will take on a new and meaningful existence for each and every one. Because of his life, the light that he brought into the world, it becomes our life, right? And because of that, because of his life, it becomes our purpose. And it becomes our transformation into his image because of the light that Jesus brought into this world. So if we truly believe that life lived through faith in God is the best life of all, what will happen? Well, we'll experience a deep living, the best of all human potential. We'll experience a new challenge every day and a new opportunity every day, a life that's lived in vital communication with the eternal Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The best life that we could live. But wait a minute. It doesn't end there. We're also promised that we're going to be adopted into God's family. John 1, verse 12. It says, but to all, not some, but to all who what? Who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. I like to call it king's kids. We're king's kids. We're children of the king. Right? King of kings, the Lord of lords. Verse 13 says, They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So God is telling us then that he wants the best for us because there is nothing better than being adopted into the family of God. But this adaptation is only made possible through what? Through the flesh or the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Now, as the text we read today says, our adoption papers are signed when? When we place our trust in the name of Jesus as our Lord and Savior. His coming to earth in flesh was for the express purpose. The only thing he came here for was to give us an offer of a, to be adopted into the family. C.S. Lewis explained this by saying, The Son of God becomes a man to enable man to become sons of God. Think about that. The Son of God became a man to enable man to become sons of God. So Jesus' word for us today is, I want the best for you. Now there's at least one more word God would like to speak to us today. Number three and it's probably the most important is, I'm with you. I'm with you. We talked about God having our back. Well, he says he's with us. John 1 and 14 says, The word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Now Matthew 28 and 20 says, Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. Now, here's what he said. Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, there's a true story. There was a psychiatrist several years ago who supposedly pioneered this new treatment for some people who were severely mentally ill. Uh, these were catatonic patients who curled up in, in the fetal position on their beds, refusing to acknowledge that anybody else even existed. They would neither move nor speak, and the doctor moved in on the ward. He put a cot in there, 
Every day he saw those catonic patients. Sometimes he'd stop by a bed, take off his jacket, and climb into the bed with the patient. He would put his arms around the patients and gently embrace them. Now it turns out after all this that the doctor was proven to be a fraud, unfortunately, and his methods were totally useless. But let me tell you about another doctor, amen, who has methods also, and his methods are flawless. And his name you might know is Dr. Jesus. You see, in Christ Jesus, God's moved into our world, didn't he? God took us in our frail humanity. He took us full of sin and, and full of doubt. He embraced us through his son, Jesus Christ. He put his arms around us when we were down. And he's here right now, you see. He's here amongst us in this very room right now as we're gathered together to worship him and to hear his word. Our God is not the God, God out there somewhere in the distant realms of the cosmos. No, our God is right here by our side. He's seeing us right now. He's encouraging us. He's protecting us. He's keeping us from falling. And he's loving us when we don't even love ourselves sometimes. Now, thank God that he's constantly affirming his promise to be our companion until the end of the age and then beyond that. So the promise of God through Christ is that even in the worst of times, we're never alone. We're never alone. God is with us. He's Emmanuel to all who believe in him. And I want to close today about a story, another story, of an elderly man named Donald. He was quite ill, and his family called for their minister, as most of us do when someone's ill. And the minister entered the sick room, and he sat down, and he, he noticed another chair that was pulled up on the other side of the bed. And the chair was real close to the bed. Nobody was sitting in it. And the pastor said, well, Donald, I see uh, I'm not your first visitor today, because it appeared that somebody else had been in there visiting. And the elder man, elderly man that was sick looked puzzled for a moment. Then he realized that the pastor had noticed the other empty chair on the other side of the bed. And he's, uh, the pastor said, I'll tell you about that chair, pastor. He said, many years ago, I found it quite difficult to pray. So one day, I shared this problem with my pastor. And the pastor at the time told me not to worry about kneeling or about placing myself in some pious position or posture. Instead, he said, just sit down, put a chair opposite you, and imagine Jesus sitting in that chair. And talk to him as you would be talking to one of your friends. And the elderly man said, I've been doing that ever since. So it's continued on here in my sickbed. A few hours later, uh, the daughter of the man called the pastor that had gone to visit her father. And when he answered, she informed him that her father had died very suddenly. And she was quite shaken because she had no idea his death was so near. And then she said, I had just gone to lie down with him for an hour or two, for he seemed to be sleeping so comfortably when I went back and he was dead. Then she said, I noticed his hand was on the empty chair at the side of the bed. She said, isn't that strange? And then the pastor said, no, it's not strange. I understand. You see, Jesus' word to us is, I am with you. And he was with that man when he left this world. Does Jesus have a word for you today? Yes, he does. It's God's divine and eternal communication to each and every one of us, embodied in the person of Jesus. You see, Jesus spoke his word clearly, but not loudly. He spoke it plainly, but quietly. It was spoken in humility, but it would have a profound effect on the whole world. If you're waiting for the shout, you may miss the whisper. That's right. It's God's word. We hear his words today. He says, I love you. I want the best for you. And I'm with you. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, that you are the one who is with us at all times, that you love us. And you are love, so we couldn't have a greater love, that you adopted us into your family. And we thank you, Lord, that you are who you are, Lord, that we serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
And we pray that you will use us to bring your message to those who don't know you so they too can enjoy the confidence and the blessing of your love in their lives, that they too may have you with them at all times. And we thank you for this in all things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we hope you enjoyed today's message and we pray that you will join us again next week and we say God's blessings out to each and every one today. We'll see you next week.